power wise it's long term it's long term energy source mm-hmm. um you know it, it it could also help the space race mm-hmm. in quite a massive massive way mm-hmm. um you know n- nuclear powered spaceships it sounds mm-hmm. so five year old doesn't it <laughs> but it's it's true you know they will go they'll go a lot further a lot a lot longer a lot safer as long as they get off the ground without going bang. Um, And I think that's half the problem, isn't it? Hello. Hello. How How are you doing? doing? Good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I know we had a bit of a hiatus last week due to Mm. unforeseen circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, So we are a week behind on the podcast. But I'm sure our, our listeners and viewers aren't that bothered. <laughs> we'll catch up. We'll do two. Epi- we'll do two episodes one week. And we'll yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll we'll catch up. We'll catch up. I know I look a bit. I look a bit. Oh. I don't know. I look a bit like I've got a tan. I've got a, go. a, a, a studio light thing going on because I'm in a yeah. dark, a yeah. darkish room. Well, it looks professional enough to me. I mean, I look I like I've got you. look like yeah. I've got a tan. Yeah, <laughs> the people who have been watching this for a while probably know what you look like by now. So. Oh, that's it, exactly. <laughs> yes, I haven't been on holiday, by the way. That's not why we were <laughs> not here last week. Mm. Yeah, right. so there you go. Mm-hmm. So what's the topic for this week, Alex? The topic this week is, is quite apt, actually, for our current economic climate, mm-hmm. is drone technology in the renewable energy age. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sounds impressive, doesn't it? Does, yeah. Sounds uh, all grown up. It, it does sound very grown up and it sounds very responsible given where we are headed. Mm. Mm. That it does. It does indeed as I as I sit here in my in my house trying to keep my heating off because yeah. it's expensive. Yeah, and um, I, I've got the thick jumper on. So yeah, sure I'm not cold. Well, I'm wearing my uh I'm wearing my hammer <laughs> missions. I always get the wrong side. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting my hammer missions uh my fleecy thing on which is kind of cozy yeah um, and i have got a little radiator on i'm not in my off i'm not in my my shed office mm-hmm. um i'm in the house today because it's too cold to be out there so varon why renewable energy oh yeah well yeah i guess you know uh, there's no way of not sounding like captain obvious over here when, <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but i think we've known about renewable energy as being an important goal for a long time Yep. Um, you know, so we've always had sustainability goals, net zero goals. Um, I think none of that has changed. Um, I think what has changed over the last, you know, 18 months or so, um, unfortunately, because of, you know, geopolitics um, mm. um, and what's happening in the world right now, I think uh, there is an increasing need to to sort of move not only towards renewable energy, but also for countries to be self-sustaining in, in energy in terms of having independent energy, um, which typically means renewable energy, because obviously the non-renewable sources uh, do push us more towards um, more few countries as opposed to everyone having uh, a way to generate their own mm. own energy. So, um, yeah, so I would say, you know, it's renewable energy, but it's also energy independence um, and it's a function of the current geopolitical climate it is it is indeed um you know if energy energy sources be it fossil you know they're on the decline massively mm. i mean you could have rise in in electric cars mm. um although you know to make electric cars is quite expensive and then obviously to charge them you're using energy but is it you know is it coming from a sustainable source or you know, it's all it's all a bit up in the air, really. Um, so, you know, I think it sounds weird. Why why can drones help with renewable energy? Um, yeah. You know, why are we why are we here? What is this? What is this subject all about? Yeah, um, I mean, most forms of renewable there. Put my teeth in renewable energy um, require transforming one source from one to another really so i mean for example you know solar and wind yeah you know they they draw they draw their energy from a natural source whether it be the sun or the or the wind yeah um you know 
as it, it, it requires something physical to create the energy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, another way of looking at it is that I think our energy um, has always had, um, at least from our point of view, two different ways of sort of, sort of not creation, but sort of generation. Mm. So like you've got the one bucket of chemical reactions where you burn something and that le leads to energy. And the other bucket is where you transform energy from another source, right? And the yeah. renewable ones are the ones that typically where you're not burning anything, but you're rather kind of, you know, transforming it from some other form of energy, as you correctly pointed out, like solar or yeah. wind um, and uh, and even nuclear. So I think, you know, um, those are the those are the sort of future for renewable, really. And yeah, um, it's kind of and it's accelerating. Right. I mean, you're seeing more and more of it happening. Mm. Um, I remember when I was a kid going to Brighton. And mm. the sea was the sea. You looked out mm. and there was this vast expanse of nothingness. Mm. Now you look out and there's a vast expanse of wind farms. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. just hundreds of wind farms, you know, offshore oh, yeah. wind farms. Um, oh, yeah. You know, people, some farmers have their own wind farm to create mm. their own energy source. Uh, the same with solar. You know, mm. lots of people are now taking up having solar panels installed on their on their houses yeah. you know my my next door neighbor yeah that way yeah. um uh, their whole roof is yeah. is all solar panels they oh, replaced, yeah. you know they've they've covered their whole roof in solar panels because the, it is a renewable energy source oh, i mean yeah. solar in this country mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. don't get a lot of sun <laughs> yeah <laughs> over the but, summer yeah. yay but yeah. in the winter not not so much mm. not so much so yeah you know why why drones and renewable energy sources what what's what are we talking here well obviously those sources require maintenance yeah you know they are prone to wear and tear over time as is everything including yeah. us as human beings <laughs> yeah so i think yeah what but you know what you were just mentioning about the wind farms um you know across uh you know you can see from bryson and I think um, any form of transform, any form of energy that requires transforming, mm. it requires a physical asset to do it, it. So you know, you've got wind, you've got wind turbines, you've got um, solar panel farms, um, you've got cooling towers. Um, so that physical asset that is going to convert that energy from one form to the other um, is going to decay over time um, because if things are left unchecked, uh, they decay over time, and so. That's where drones come in, right? Um, yeah, yeah. That's where yeah. drones arrive. So mm. we've, yeah, we've got to why, yeah, why drones? So drones, obviously, you know, they're a they're a very useful tool. Mm. Um, as we always talk about, they, you know, they they are a tool, mm. um, and in some respects, they can they can help us maintain the the future. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, those those yeah as as we've said those those sources are, are going to require you know maintenance and inspection and mm. inspection is mm. really where drones come in yeah to inspect those assets to keep them maintained for future delivery yeah and there it is exactly. there we go yeah so that's yeah, it I... podcast podcast done podcast done thanks. thank you very much i'm off uh, thanks <laughs> we'll see you later <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um you know, it's so. I mean, let's talk a little bit about renewable energy assets. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know we've kind of mentioned them in our intro sequence. Yeah. But what have we got? Yeah. So we could uh, start with wind farms, maybe. Um, yeah. So we can talk about wind energy. Um. So, I guess, you know, from we can talk about. I mean, explaining what a wind farm is might be too captain obviously, but I think. Um, you know, we could talk a little bit more about what happens to these wind farms over time. Um, yeah. and we can talk about where drones come in. Um, so, I mean, you know, wind turbines are, they are great in terms of being able to generate, um, you know, energy from just wind, which is very natural and, and present in a lot of yeah. places. Uh, but, uh, you know, as, as anyone might know anything with, um, you know, kind of out in the open, a blade out in the open will be subject to a lot of wear and tear. Um, 
Um, moving parts, and really. Moving parts, it's yeah. Like an engine, you know, yeah. it has moving parts. Yeah. Therefore, over time, those moving parts will will degrade and wear. Yeah. Um, so what better than, you know, using a drone mm -hmm. to inspect, uh, you know, a wind turbine or a, a wind farm to mm -hmm. see where that wear and tear is? Yeah. You know, how do, how do we um, how do we fix that asset? What's wrong with that asset? You know, the last thing you want to be doing is getting a big old ladder or a cherry picker and going up and having a look at a wind turbine because yeah. they're massive and yeah. huge. Yeah. And why not use the technology that is currently being developed? And if DJI have got anything to say about it, it's, you know, being developed every five minutes um, to, you know, to take advantage of finding issues with that asset. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I mean, the alternative in wind turbines, if you're not using drones, is very much is the uh, rope access side of things, which, as we know, are, I mean, instrumenting a wind turbine um, for rope access, you know, just just extremely expensive. The operation mm. is, um, even if you've got the best health and safety measures, you know, it's not um, anything with heights is not safe. Let's just put it that way, no matter how much training you have. Yeah, I mean, it's um, a huge it's a huge risk. So why risk. put your, why put yourself at risk when you yeah. can you know you can take up a you know a few thousand pounds worth of of equipment and yeah. that's the risk you know yeah. and if you smash that up then you replace it yeah yeah you know hard exactly. to replace a human yeah so yeah exactly so if you if you need to kind of um you know inspect something use the drone you can replace it as 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 you mentioned and and also um you know if if you're not sure if any repair is needed then why put a life at risk you know yeah exactly so, exactly um so yeah that's so true and wind turbines have so many different issues you know they've got it you know, can be struck by lightning they could yep. have missing paint they could have missing teeth uh it could be the trailing edge the leading edge you know, they've got three blades front and back and all the yep. edges um so there's quite a few quite a lot of surface area for, there's a where, yeah, there's a lot to a lot to look at and a lot to check for um mm. you know and do you want to be roping that not really yeah, yeah. no yeah. and it, and time consuming as well yeah you know whereas a drone set up correctly set up with automation correctly can go and inspect that blade and be done you know before you've even got up there yeah yeah and we're saying you know um if you do it manually you probably 30 to 40 minutes to do per turbine uh, with automation, you can probably do it in fifteen to twenty minutes if you've yep. got something set up from beforehand. Um, and yeah, it's just the time savings as well. And then you've yep. got really high quality data that you can go back and have a look at uh, in the office environment. Yeah, uh, you know, and share with everybody else and get you know high quality decisions made on on top of that data. So, um, but that's all wind farms. What what there about uh, what what about other we got solar? Resources? Solar, yeah, okay. solar, you know, mm -hmm. solar panels, mm -hmm. they can crack, they can get dirty, they can fail. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, solar panels, well, you know, solar farms are generally on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so they're a lot easier to to access. But, they're, but know, there's masses of them. You know, some yeah. wind farms are huge. Yeah. And it's going to take you how long to, to stroll down each row of solar panels and check if they're damaged or cracked or or um foggy or faded or you know whatever yeah shut the drone up automated straight down the line taking photos as you go you've got you know you can do it in x amount of time depending on obviously how big your wind farm is um and then you can take that data away in the comfort of your own office yeah and go through the data yeah 100%. and then you know oh look panel six on row four it's got a big crack in it let's replace it or it's yeah. fogged or or whatever yeah and the big thing with solar is that unlike wind turbines where wind turbines you can see the issue visually um because most of the time when you know you've got an issue you can see it visually whereas for solar farms um if it's a solar issue it's predominantly not going to be visible no. What you need to do is to have, you know, a thermal survey conducted to understand what is the, what is the, you know, uh, current state of the solar cell. Is it functioning properly or not? Yeah. Because those things will only come up in the thermal spectrum. Yeah. 
not in the you know they come in the infrared spectrum as opposed to the visible light spectrum so i mean to imagine someone walking with an infrared sensor and capturing every single row of solar farms is just unscalable you know? well they could they could stick on a hammer missions podcast and just quite happently stroll through it you know <laughs> yes. they could probably get through our whole back catalog by the time yeah. they've done one half of a farm yeah, yeah they could listen to drones in renewable energy as they're walking <laughs> <laughs> while they're going yeah so you know it's a lot less time consuming mm-hmm. um and obviously you're gonna you know you are gonna see what you need to see yeah 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 100 percent and you can you know create maps uh, out of the um, out of thermal um, sort of thermal photos as well as yep. visual photos. Um, those maps um, could be then shared across the organization. Uh, and as you said, row six, panel four, you know exactly where the issue is. Yeah, um, and also you're keeping a digital asset, aren't hmm. you? Of a, a digital record, a digital asset of of what you've got. Yeah. So, you know, you may in six months time add another six rows, mm. you know, and you, you can, you can keep that, keep that asset, that asset rolling. hundred um, percent. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually a good point. This is where like, I think solar kind of goes beyond inspection because you can design where to put panels in the most efficient way Yeah. by having a map or a record of the previous panels, whether it's in a farm or on top of a roof. Yep. Um, you can use that to inform design decisions and then inspect what you have constructed from the design. So it's a nice little sort of cycle. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, um, you know, even if the panels are, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, if the panels are on a roof, again, you, you've, you know, you're going to save yourself time because you've got to access, you know, if you doing it without a drone, you've got to access that roof, mm. whether it be, you know, climbing up on the roof or, or getting roof access. If you've got a drone, it takes that that risk out of it yeah you know 100 percent. yeah um your 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 feet are safely on the ground and on terra firma on terra firma and uh and you can do so many more uh if you are doing sort of roof uh, inspections with solar panels you can do so many more in the same day as well so it's just productivity gains are insane you know yeah um so yeah so solar has a bright future with drones i think um very clever. No, no, nice no. plan words. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. He didn't even know you did that, did you? No, no. I, I had an <laughs> inkling of something happening. Um, uh, um, what about um, cooling towers? Um, I mean, cooling towers, you know, you've got, obviously, again, you've got cracks, you've got faults, uh, blockages. You mm-hmm. know, there's all sorts of bits and bobs. Uh, mm-hmm. And again, it's a tower. Mm-hmm. So, you know, why why bother getting using either rope access or a cherry picker or ladders yeah. use the drone you'll yeah. get it done so much quicker you'll yeah. pick up so much more information yeah um and you know we at hammer have missions that will that will cover that you yeah. know and collect the high quality data that you need that you can go back and then go here it is you can create a 3d representation of that data yeah. you know you can use you can use your photography alongside your 3d you know your 3d modeling yeah um 100 yeah so i think cooling towers you know as you mentioned you've got um you know you don't need rope access or you don't need it for inspection and they're typically parabolic in shape so mm. you know you've got this sort of really interesting geometry in these cooling towers that um inspecting them actually from all angles in the right way can be quite hard and quite, it can be quite yeah. easy to sort of like miss something because of those parabolic shapes um and so i think using drones again um with the right set of tools can allow you to sort of capture all the different sort of facades off the off the cooling tower yeah and model them and sometimes you've got you know more than one in the same place which a bit like you know turbines not as many as turbines uh, wind turbines but you can have a couple of different ones in the same place. So you can, again, benefit from the efficiency gains of using the same drone to capture all of them um, and digitize all of it for structural engineers to look into. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a huge advantage, not only time saving, but, you know, you know, risk mitigation. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's um, it's almost why wouldn't you? 
Yeah. Where do you stand, Alex, on the whole nuclear debate? Are you very um, pro-nuclear? Sorry, a little bit of a tangent here. Um, are you pro-nuclear? Are you kind of, uh, um, you, are you like, mm, we've got to be safe with nuclear? Because um, it is a very interesting yeah, it's, industry uh, where, you know, you've got, a, it has a lot of potential. It does. But, but because of the things we've gone through with, you know, mm. Fukushima and all the, even though like the total number of fatalities that has actually been really low, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it's just the risk of something happening has always been a big question in public. It's always been. It's all. I mean, it has its advantages, doesn't it? You know, um, I don't agree so much with the military capabilities of of nuclear technology. I mean, that's that sucks. Mm -hmm. um, power wise, it's long term. It's long term energy source. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it it could also help the space race. Mm -hmm. In quite a massive, massive way, mm -hmm. um, you know, nuclear-powered spaceships it sounds mm -hmm. so five-year-old, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's it's true, you know. They will go, they'll go a lot further, a lot, a lot longer, a lot safer, mm -hmm. as long as they get off the ground without going bang. Um, and I think that's half the problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean. But for, yeah, for, for energy, do you think that, you know, because I think nuclear right now has, what was it, 4% of the GDP, like of the um, world share for, in terms of renewables? I'll have to check, fact check these numbers. Mm -hmm. But um, it has as, like... an, as an energy source, mm. yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself out there and say, and say yeah. Um, but... You know, because mining, you know, mining fossil fuels is only going to last so long before mm. we run out. Mm. Um, and yeah, you've got wind, you've got solar, and there'll always be advances in technology when it comes to those those renewable sources. Mm -hmm. um, I think nuclear works, but for how long? Yeah, um, I guess with nuclear, you've also got you know what type of nuclear. You've got the mm. fission side of things, which is what predominantly is being utilized at the moment. Mm. Um, but then you've also got some really rapid. Uh, advancements on the fusion side of things which is nowhere near commercialization at the moment no. uh, but i think there was a few weeks ago uh, kind of a, um, a sort of a, a breakthrough in terms of being able to have the size of a football field where type laboratory where they were able to produce um, a net positive energy um, transformation using fusion which was first time something of that kind but uh, okay. literally the energy in the sun being recreated uh, on earth but wow it's a very small very small contained area um but yeah i guess you know we don't know the time horizon uh no in terms and of it's... nuclear and we need it now like we need something now right we, we don't do need yeah <laughs> we do and it's you know it's it, it's are we mucking around with something as as humans that we shouldn't be mm, okay you know we okay. kind of we kind of found it and went oh what can we do with this mm. and we made weapons out of it. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, you know, we do that with everything, don't we? We do. We yeah. do. How how can this hurt someone else? How can we make this explode? <laughs> it's basically what humans do, isn't it? How can we yeah. make this go bang? Oh, it does that. And yeah. and yeah, and now look at the state of us. Um, as yeah. an energy source, I, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. But it has so many underlying factors mm -hmm. of, you know, you had Chernobyl, yeah. you know, and that that was catastrophic, mm -hmm. and still is to this day. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still there's still issues there. It's encased in concrete, and obviously the whole you, you've got the whole Ukrainian war thing going on as well at the moment. Um, but that's still, you know, it's still a massive, dangerous area to be in. Yeah. Then you had Fukushima again. You know, a, a huge tragedy and a huge loss of life. It, it it's a dangerous bit of kit to be playing with. Yeah, yeah, it's the. I mean, that's the thing. You know, it's very hard to um, have some objective way of saying whether it's safe or not because mm. the total risk to life or fatalities has actually been really low. But then it could have been higher if you know. And then that and that's the thing. We don't really know uh, what could have been. No, and, and you know, it's like it's like giving a kid a box of matches. And saying, "Don't play with those." 
Yeah. <laughs> it's good. They're gonna so, they're gonna do it, and yeah. they might like one. They might like the whole box. Yeah. Yeah. They might just yeah. give them back. Yeah. You don't. You, you know. You don't really know mm. where it's all going. Hundred percent. Um. But yeah, at least with wind and solar, we you know we don't have that kind of a. Uh, you know, no, we don't, because yeah, it's and... uh, you know, it's it's a source that we've we've always had. Mm-hmm. You know, the sun has always shone, mm-hmm. not necessarily in Britain. Um, <laughs> <Never>. <laughs> but wind, we have plenty of that, oh, and rain. That. You know, if they can make if they can make more, yeah, I mean, you know, they have made energy out of water. Oh yeah, yeah, hydro. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. hydro. So if we could have more, you know, it rains here a lot. So why don't we do something with hydro? Um, you know. It, the, as I said earlier, the, the the technology behind wind and solar will will only will only grow, yeah. And hopefully that way we can we can tap into those renewable resources and use them even more to their full potential. Hundred percent, yeah. Um, so assuming you were inspecting wind farms or solar farms mm-hmm. with drones, mm-hmm. uh, what drones would you go with? Depends, doesn't it? it? All depends on mm-hmm. on the on the asset, mm-hmm. what you're trying to you know what you're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you've got a large wind farm, you might look at a larger unit, mm-hmm. more power. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you might be able to get a few done with one battery source. Mm-hmm. Then again, you may you know there may be a a danger of hitting the object so you may want to be further away from it therefore you're going to need a better um a better camera on your system therefore you're going to need a bigger rig Mm -hmm. um you know some solar farms are are squidged into to places that aren't very drone friendly so you'd Mm -hmm. be looking at a smaller aircraft something like the mavic 3 enterprise Mm -hmm. it all really depends on on your asset and where it's placed yeah I mean, wind farms generally are places where they're it's quite windy. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not gonna you're not gonna want something that's gonna get knocked about. Yeah. Um, you're gonna want something that that can withstand quite a lot of poke. Hundred like percent. Yeah. M three hundred, for example. You know, yeah. she can take a battering. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. It all depends on your asset, really. There's there's no, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to use a you know a Mavic three mini on a solar farm if you wanted to um or a mavic 2 or a mavic 3 it just all depends on on what you want it what you want your end result to be and how safe the environment is and what sort of quality of data you want to collect yeah yeah that's uh, exactly yeah so it's just so many different variables um and as you mentioned if you fix the asset a little bit or the use case a little bit then it just becomes easier to make that choice yeah um, i think i like to think of it uh over time i've started thinking about it as the three main like tr- like a triangle with three things one is like the use case um and then the other two corners of the triangle are um the drone and the camera yeah um, and then the other two corners are sort of like informed by the use case so um you know if you're doing solar you need thermal and so that fixes the camera to the thermal cameras and then that yep. fixes the drones to the ones that can actually carry thermal cameras. Yeah. Um, but then again, as you mentioned, wind, you need to have a drone that can have that capacity. So then it fixes the drones to be probably larger units. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting, you know, um, uh, but maybe on solar, you don't need that large unit, maybe a smaller unit will do just fine. Um, yeah. And if, you know, if you are, if you are just inspecting the glass panels as opposed to the thermal mm. side of it, yeah. then you could use a smaller drone that has less, you know, that doesn't have a thermal sensor, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, it's all variable. You know, it d- depends at the end of the day, what, what your stakeholder or your client wants. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Give them the decision. Yeah, exactly. Say, what What would you like me to do? Do you want yeah. this? Do you want that? Yeah, yeah. Take it out of your hands. Yeah, yeah. Or more, because uh, I think I don't. I don't think a lot of the engineering or the um, sort of technical industry is familiar with like you know what drones to use. So I think really what they should be doing is 
saying what is the outcome they want to have. You know, they want to yeah. be able to like work with X data with Y number of people on a computer in the cloud. You know, yeah. And then everything well, else should I be. I mean, they're going to say what what can your drone do, and you'll say X Y Z. What do you want? What do you want from it? Yeah. And then you go, well, yes, I can do that, or no, I can't do that. I'll have to use another bit of kit. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. I think things are still um, in the air at the moment in terms of what is the standard for different um, different types of assets. Yeah. But I think over time we will see more standardization and convergence to you know certain drone platforms, certain yeah. camera platforms, certain software platforms. So um, yeah, cool. Um, and then saying cool cooling towers is the <laughs> other one there we go very good very good um, i mean with cooling towers you're going to want to orbit the structure mm -hmm. so you want to run a tower mission if you're mm -hmm. using hammer obviously mm -hmm. um you know something with a good with a good sensor on it you mm -hmm. know depending on where your tower is yeah you know you could be surrounded by trees you, you just you don't know um but a high quality payload that will pick up um mm -hmm you know, discrepancies and, and cracks and, and whatever yeah. on the cooling tower. So that the sensor needs to be a, needs to be a decent one. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, M300 if, if you can, mm -hmm. um, and if the space allows, cause obviously the M300 is a big old, she's a big old boy. Yeah. She's a big old boy. <laughs> yeah. Bit of an ironic statement. Yeah. There. She's a big aircraft. There you go. That's you better. Go. Um, you know, or if you're in a, you know, in a slightly tighter environment, maybe the, you know, the Mavic 2 Enterprise or the Mavic 3 Enterprise, depending yeah. on what you've got. Yeah. Um, you know, something with a good quality sensor on it. Yeah. 100%. And I think one of the things, uh, as a general rule, I think it's good to kind of optimize for drones and cameras that are built for inspection when it comes yeah. to renewable energy assets, as opposed to mapping. So, you know, I think um, favoring or looking for inspection drones as opposed to mapping drones, generally speaking, um, could be a good idea. Not to say you can't use a mapping drone on, on these projects, but I think, you know, horses for courses kind of thing, you kind yeah. of you know, get the right, right thing, the right, right job. Right tools, say. right tools for the job. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's kind of where we are at with drones. Um, yeah. What about software? So let's move towards the software side of things. Well, let's talk about us, shall we? Okay. <laughs> that's why we're here. Why not? We are, we are Hammer Missions. Right. Um. You know, and and how can we, how can we help in the in the age of renewable energy? Mm -hmm. um you know we have we have specific flight plans or missions mm -hmm. um that suit both solar and wind farms and if you like cooling towers mm -hmm. you know we we have specific missions that will cover those those aspects and make our clients life easier you know our, our subscribers um you know yeah. They can they can go out and perform these missions easily. Yeah, I, I, and I think it, the it's interesting because what we find is that um, whether you're a drone service provider or if you're an in-house drone team, um, over time you have some, some specialization of industries. Um, if you're already in the industry, like an in-house drone team, um, then obviously your focus is going to be on those assets. One, one thing we find is that uh, for every asset, like a wind turbine, solar panel farm, or a uh, cooling tower. Um, you don't want to have different software for different no. tasks because, you know, that leads to um, a level of inefficiency that you can't absorb because the whole point of using drones is to be more efficient, to be more safe. Um, and, you know, going across many different software doesn't help. So, one of the things when we were starting out with the flight planning side of things was to have this modularity in the software platform that you can use the software to fly the drone in 3D space um, to follow the geometry of the wind turbine, the solar farm, yeah. uh, to even follow the individual rows of the solar panels in the solar farms and to be able to also do cooling towers with the orbits. Um, yeah. And so I think this is just going to, grow into the future of any other yeah, it's, it's, come into the scene, yeah. we we kind of pride ourselves on an all-in-one software platform mm. 
you know we're 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 an adaptable format mm. yeah yeah and i think the energy industry will need that more and more because you just you will get and you know with, even with these three assets you have like so many different types i mean not not every wind turbine is the same not nope. every cooling tower is the same no. uh, and so i think over time we'll probably see more and more specialized flight plans specific to even the type and we have we have been asked haven't we we have yeah. been asked in various meetings we've had with various um prospective clients and clients you know oh yeah you do it like this but is there any chance we can tweak it and do it yeah. like this and yeah. it's you know everything's taken into consideration because yeah. as a company and as a developer we, we want to adapt you know we want to adapt to the way that our end users are using their product alongside our product yeah yeah and the same holds true for the data um, modeling and visualizations uh, and the sort of, you know, asset modeling and visualization mm. side of things. Um, you know, a wind turbine should be visualized um, like a wind turbine with the three blades and kind of like yeah. you know, in 3D space. You don't need a 3D model for a wind turbine, um, but maybe a cooling tower requires a 3D model um, and a solar farm maybe requires a thermal map. So you sort of have different uh ways of looking at the the data yeah um, so far um everything we're building has been from that perspective so if you upload a wind turbine data set to hammer it will be visualized like a wind turbine uh if you upload a uh, solar panel farm obviously you have the options to be able to process a wind turbine but why would you you don't really want to and so it's just sort of again looking at each one of those verticals separately and then having the right inspection modeling and collaboration tools so that you know you can focus on the on, on finding the issues in these assets as opposed to you know working with the data um, and and the worst thing you have is like having everything inside a file so that's like a, like our platform's completely cloud based so there's no files yeah. right so uh, so it's just easier to kind of work with the data uh, thinking of it like an asset but the digital copy of that asset like a digital twin and it, at the end of the day, Farron, it all boils down to, as we've said time and time again, data quality, high quality yeah. data. You yeah. know, if you can collect high quality data yeah. by using our tool or, or, or whomever's, you know, that is only going to, you know, your end client is going to is going to be chuffed a bit. Yeah. You can, if you can provide them with with the highest quality data possible where they don't have to send either you or a competitor back out in the field to get that data again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and you know, having that one single place where you can, um, again, if you're an in-house team, um, you you could be an in-house team still serving, for example, um, you know, the energy industry. And we've seen this that you know, there's a lot of engineering uh, engineering companies using drones now to serve energy customers uh, on their structural assets, and we we find that. You know, you, you can end up having like lots of different stakeholders. So, you know, and maybe there's even like a drone service pro provider involved. So you've got the drone service yeah. provider, uh, you've got the engineering company, and then you've got the actual asset owner energy company. Uh, and so all of those are kind of like working together on this project of understanding what is wrong with this cooling tower, solar farm or wind yeah. turbine. And so having that one central source of truth where you've got all that data and can be easily shared between all of these stakeholders just means it's really easy to have that conversation uh, if you're talking about x blade or y panel yeah or, you know because it's it's there it's you, you've got it you've got it all, yeah. all collected in in one place yeah yeah and we do this with the mill right like so every time yeah. you capture the mill oh she got a look in she got a look in this week <laughs> there we go yeah, uh, we collaborate on the mill, right? So we it's just easier to do that um, by just sending a link and then having yeah. a, uh, a view into the same reality. Yeah, I mean, I, I go out and capture the data, I upload the data, I process the data, and then I share it with you. Yeah. And then you go, okay, this looks good or this doesn't look good. And then we, you know, we we play around with it and we go out and recapture it and we do it again. And which yeah. kind of leads on to 4D predictive maintenance, really. Yes. Yeah. Um, that was a good segue, Farron. You, did, did you plan that? No, no, I didn't. I think you did. No. <laughs> I, well, I, it it kind of it was there in my mind. Just, I thought just, oh, just good, when 
that's a good segue we'll go we'll, we'll go with it yeah. uh you know and uh, as we have experienced with with you know with the mill um i guess at some point the mill was a, a kind of renewable energy source yeah actually true yeah yeah it was it's, yeah mm-hmm. um you know capturing data isn't just one off mm-hmm. you don't just go out and go oh, i've captured it i'm done that'll do mm-hmm. um you know it's important to maintain that plan mm-hmm. and go and shoot it again mm-hmm. again and again and again because you can yeah. understand the changes over time 100 you know, percent. go out and capture the same asset as long as that's what your your client wants you to do mm-hmm. go out and capture it over and over again whether it's once a month once every three months you know you'll see the changes month on month yeah as to what has happened with that asset and you see it like a building site yeah you know, you know, you start at the beginning, yeah, and your building site will grow. It'd be the same with with, you know, a, a cooling tower or a you know solar farm or a wind turbine. Yeah. That asset will change over time. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and if you can track those changes, and if you can preempt uh, where the issues might occur or mm. are already there, um, I think that's a lot of cost savings for these companies. Uh, yeah, because you can, you know, a stitch in time saves nine, really. So that's kind of where this goes. Old school. Old school, yeah. Old school. Uh, old okay. school, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it's, um, yeah, it, you know, maintaining that flight plan and that <clears> model, 3D model, and then kind of doing it over and over again um, is what leads to uh, the 4D uh, predictive yeah. maintenance side of things. Which I'm is actually, we're, we're going. actually putting an article together about 4D. Mm-hmm. Um, which will be coming out soon. Yep. Um, when I've yeah. written it. <laughs> when you've written it. Yeah, when I've written it, which will be this week. Sure. Um, yeah. So, I mean, where does that leave the future of uh, of drones and and renewables? Um, I guess it's not all about drones, is it? It won't be in the future. Well, it will be, but it will be other tech as well. Hundred percent. There's so much more tech out there that we're we're seeing, you know, having a an introduction much like drones did, you know, ten odd years ago. Um, I mean, robotics are playing a big part in in stuff now. Yeah, you know, ground based robotics, whether they be the old um, uh, Boston Dynamics dogs, mm-hmm. um, you know, robotic vehicles, automated robotic vehicles. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of stuff on the way that will help. Yeah. Industry. Yeah. hundred percent. I think drones might, you know, I mean, obviously most of what we talk about refers to aerial drones, but I think drones in general is just going to become like this generic word for, you know, some form of a robot with a sensor. Yep. Um, and, you know, those, those could be, as you mentioned, ground robots. For wind, I've seen lots of like crawler technologies now where you've got, you know, robots on blades that can kind of, um, you know, sense and kind of sort of sweep the entire blade from the top to bottom. That's um, creepy. I don't want to know stuff like that. That's horrible. <laughs> That's yeah. not nice. Um, I mean, the, yeah. the Boston Dynamic dogs freaked me out when we saw them at the Build Expo. Yeah, that, yeah, was, yeah. that was freaky enough, although now I want one. And I'm yeah. trying to convince Aaron to get one. We'll, we'll get one at some point. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, you've got sensors, ground cameras, you've got so many things. And drones are not an island. Uh, aerial drones, you know, they're going to be many different technologies. Yeah. And very likely that, you know, you will have, um, you know, all these robots working together to maintain our structures, producing our energy, which is uh, a pretty amazing thing to think about. And then they'll tap into that energy and then take over the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yes Skynet. Like themselves straight it's in. happening yeah it's, it's gonna happen and we'll end up there slaves <laughs> um which moves on moves you into ai which is the same freaky it's it's all you know it's all beginning to happen i mean uh, alongside drone technology of course we'll, we'll have ai technology that will be able to you know it'll, it'll bring the it'll bring the job down even further because you won't you know you will have to have human intervention at some point but AI will be able to tell you, oh, look, there's a crack in this blade or this panel's not quite right, um, mm-hmm. which will make our lives easier until they take over and kill us all. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Yeah, I had yeah, to. Yeah. I, had to. I mean, yeah, 
yeah. you know, it's... I think I'm more optimistic. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Optimistic over here. <laughs> um, you know, it's AI is moving forward in, in leaps and bounds. Yeah. And yeah. I know it's something we, we are looking at introducing in our platform in the not-so-distant future. Yeah. Um, and it will help. Yeah. You know, you know, it will help. It will help yeah. a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think for AI, there's uh, two different types of AI, which is going to have a profound impact on uh, our industry. Um, I think there is one, the uh, detection side of things where, you know, we'll be able to detect things uh, in terms of the asset, mm. what's wrong, where, pinpoint those very quickly. And over time, that's just going to become standard practice. Yeah, but I think the one that is really interesting, which is really new, is all the generative side of things. Uh, which is, you know, um, come up with, as you, as some of our audience might have already experienced, there is generative AI for things like chat GPT or even uh, things like Dolly, where you can kind of create new things with AI. Um, and one thing I'm really excited about from the renewable side of things is that maybe we get to a stage where AI can tell us, how do you make a better wind turbine? How do you make a better solar panel? How do you make a better um and ai is pretty scary i've been mucking around with ai art yeah, yeah. and it's it's amazing what the sort of stuff it can produce just yeah. from maybe three or four sentences yeah you know you can create something that you know back in my college days would have taken me ages to create it's yeah. done it in a matter of minutes yeah so exactly. yeah ai is coming on leaps and bounds folks 100 percent. yeah um and it's so cool to be living through it you know yeah yeah, so. yeah it's um yeah it's kind of freaky because the future is is now kind of yeah. weirdness yeah. Um, and i like what you've written i love this line here <laughs> it says with the right tools technology and people the future is bright <laughs> i think that is where we should end the podcast because that is there you, go. you can't get much more you know a much more truer sentence, the true is even a word, uh, much more better sentence than that to, to kind of top us off. Um, you know, it's only going, oh, this is going to sound really cheesy. It's only going up. <laughs> Things are in the air, but they're going up. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Things are in the air, but it's all moving upwards. Um, yeah, I think, you know, the stuff we've discussed, it, it you know, it does lead to a, it does lead to a bright future. 100%. Yeah. Uh, you know, for renewables. Yeah. And I think everyone that's working with drones um, in technology or uh, with engineers, you know, I think it's cool to kind of um, be aware of all these new things and technologies and tools mm. that are coming to, to um, coming to light and coming, you know, becoming commercially available and becoming useful beyond the domain of science. Um, so I think... Yeah um it's going to be really interesting to see what different people do with it um we're obviously doing our bit with the software side of things um but we're always open to sort of seeing what other people are doing and yeah so if, if anyone's doing anything interesting with renewable energy and is listening um yeah feel free to reach out uh, yeah be good to be could... good to hear from you even if you yeah. just leave us a comment or or email us on um oh i can do my lot when we do my final bit or you can email us on team at hammermissions.com and you know tell us all about it see how we can get involved or see how we can help you yeah you know we'll see see what's what 100%. cool Varen. brilliant good chat good chat yeah. about renewables and how there we can help there we go um yeah optimistic view uh, an optimistic view of the future yes maybe the future maybe of energy is bright yeah there we go yeah. <laughs> we've hammered that line in this <laughs> yeah just smash that line in a bit further <laughs> <laughs> cool well as per usual folks um you know drop us a like mm -hmm. ring the bell all that wonderful stuff that you can do with youtube um you know give us a comment uh if you need to get hold of us we're on team at hammermissions.com baron it's been a pleasure as likewise alex we're back again um and yeah i'll catch you next time yeah catch you next time oh, thanks so alex cheers, cheers. Man, take care. bye